So the top just lifts straight off. There are these tabs that sit in little slots right here. <clears throat> and you just set that aside. And then start removing stones. If you haven't done this already, you might have. You're gonna wanna be careful, cause like I said, this scratches really easily. But if you grab it on both sides, lift up, that'll unlock it. And then you can kind of bend each side out to avoid scratching the sides. It's really solid, so you can give it quite a bit of quite a bit of pull. And then we'll continue on. You just keep taking more rocks out, then take this one off, take the last of the rocks out, take this one off, and then we'll pull these heating elements off. Okay, so again, have stones cleared down to here. To remove this, just lift up, push back, and then bend it out like so. Once all your stones are removed, you can pull the bottom cage off in the same way. This one's probably going to be tight, just because it's had some weight on it. But just same thing, pull up, and then push backwards. Might have to give it a little coaxing, or even take one side off first. Now I have this side unlocked, so. I'll pull that off. It should release your spine like that. You're going to remove these little retainers. They're just slipped on over top of the elements. Pull them off like so. Once you have the bottom basket removed, you're going to take these two screws out. So once you have access to the bottom of this plate, you're just going to remove these pins. Just a quick connect. Just pull that off. And then you're gonna use a 22 millimeter socket. Um, a deep well one, actually. Uh, just cause the end of that lead sticks up a little too high. So you can use a crescent wrench or a regular 22 millimeter wrench, but a socket seems to fit really well down in there. Um, and then it's just a nut that you'll remove. Make sure you don't drop it down in there. Actually, pro tip, you can use like a cloth. <laughs> just shove that down in there. That'll keep that gap closed. Um, so yeah, remove the nut. And then there's a lock washer that will come off. You'll do the same thing on the other side of the heating element, and then the heating element will just pull through like so. And then once you install it, you're gonna hook these back up. You just slide them into place like so. And just pop on, and then you should be good to go. Okay, so once you have your heating elements reinstalled, um, we're going to put these retainers back on. They just slide down and on the outside. Push them together so that they're nice and square at the base. Then we're going to put our bottom cage on. Again, there are tabs. You're just going to 
place them in the slots on the back side of the chimney flue and then push them down to lock them into place. Um, this seems like it would sit on top of that. It does not. So you gotta go underneath that plate that holds your stones in place. And then slide it into the slots in the back. You're gonna wanna hold down on this side and then use your knee kind of bend the other side around and into place. Um, takes a little bit of fiddling to get everything lined up quite right. But once you do, you should be able to push down and lock that into place like so. So once you have your bottom cage back in place, you can install the cover for the front. And just like taking it off in reverse, you go up, slide it into the tab, push down to lock it into place. And then we're gonna start stacking stones. So, Best thing to do is just, you wanna take the biggest stones and place them around the outside. It's really a good rule of thumb. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of smaller stones that work really well down up against these heating elements or to fill in gaps. Um, you're gonna wanna keep an eye out for thinner stones. You're gonna have a lot of ones that are kind of flat like that and those are perfect for insulating between the heater guards so anytime you come across those maybe set them aside to either fill in gaps or um, fill in between this guard and this guard These real big long ones work super well around the outside. Again, I got this nice flat one. It's right here in between the heating elements. Like these. These are good examples of smaller rocks. So right there, there's a pretty substantial gap. So I'm gonna try to use one of these smaller ones to help fill that. Same with the outside here. It's a good, good example right there. See that gap? So what I'm gonna do is place this rock underneath this one that I've already placed to help fill that space. So now, as you can see, that gap has been filled. about ready to put the next cage on. So same thing with the first, you know, bend the sides out. Line the tabs up with the slots on the back.
push down to lock into place. Just like so. And again, the goal here is to just leave as little of an air gap as possible because with these retainers there will be more than enough air circulation around the heating elements. Here's another great rock for between the heating elements. I'm gonna place it so that it kind of locks into place. Yeah, kind of fell perfectly. And again, try not to drop rocks if you can, it happens. This is actually a great example of a gap I'm going to try to fill. You can see right here, I have a rock here and a rock just right here. That's not that deep. But then all the way down here, I have a hole. So I'm going to take these longer, thinner rocks and see if I can't fill that hole. So that is just the kind of thing you want to try to look for. Once the second cage is full of rocks, you're going to install the third cage, fill that, and then put the cap back on. Now, before you put this on, you want to make sure that your chimney flue is at least partially extended because it will block the channels that those tabs are supposed to go into. So just run it up a little bit. It should hold with tension if you still have the reflector plate and stuff on. And then again, bend this out, slide it into place. Insert the tabs into the slots on the back. Your 
you're set. When you get above the heater guards, you want to make sure that you are placing rocks in between the heating elements just to help insulate them. If there's gaps between these, there's a very real chance that they'll bend because of the heat. And if they touch, then they're gonna be toast. So then once your rocks are in place, you're gonna insert these tabs into the slots on the top of the heater guard. Going just like so. time and that locks everything into place.